My name is Maureen Hoffman. I've been asked to speak uh, at Vascular Discovery 2020 on the issue of tissue specific hemostasis. This is just a quick overview. We all know that the cascade model of coagulation gives us uh, a good way of understanding how the procoagulant proteins interact to produce a large amount of thrombin that's sufficient to form a fibrin clot and, and prevent bleeding. This model really does a good job of helping us understand the results we get in a PT or PTT assay, but unfortunately it really has a lot of limitations as a model for what happens in vivo, either in bleeding disorders or very certainly in thrombotic disorders. If we then take into consideration what the cells do, that is, specific cell surfaces coordinate the coagulation complexes and tend to localize the reactions where they need to be. You want clotting to occur in specific locations and not spread throughout the vascular tree. So if you consider platelets, tissue factor bearing cells, endothelial cells, and possibly other cells that are specific to particular tissues, you get a much better understanding of how coagulation is organized and controlled. In addition, the anticoagulant factors are very important in controlling and localizing coagulation. They're not reflected at all in the cascade model, but they are important ways of localizing reactions to cell surfaces when you consider a cell-based model. So these concepts have helped us understand a great deal about hemostasis and thrombosis, but they really don't address the issue of tissue-specific pro and uh, procoagulant and thrombotic function. And we all know that there are some very characteristic bleeding and clotting patterns that occur in different disorders of hemostasis. And while we understand some of the features or maybe a lot of the features of different tissues that might contribute to those differences, we really don't understand in any uh, deep or mechanistic way how hemostasis occurs in different tissues and organs. So I'm going to discuss in my talk one specific example of that, and that's the issue of joint bleeding in severe hemophilia. This is an example of how uh, tissue-specific hemostasis occurs and how it can be an important clinical problem and doesn't really address the issues that occur in thrombosis, which is a much more complex problem. Our group has studied hemophilia B for a long time, partly because of our interest in the factor IX molecule, which is what's deficient in hemophilia B, but also because it's a very simple model, uh, relatively speaking, uh, to study hemostasis issues. That is, there's only one factor missing. And when we take that out of a model, then we can, to some extent, recapitulate hemophilia B. And uh, in hemophilia, severe hemophilia, either A or B, joint bleeding is very characteristic. It rarely occurs in other bleeding disorders, but in severe hemophilia, especially if it's undertreated, uh, it can be a debil it usually is a debilitating problem. And even in adequately treated patients, joint disease can be a significant factor in reducing the quality of life. So I'm going to discuss uh, how factor IX uh, plays a role in hemostasis in soft tissues compared to in the joint. And specifically, I'm going to address how factor IX localizes in the extravascular space by its unique ability to bind to collagen four that occurs in the interstitium. That appears to be a very important mechanism in controlling soft tissue bleeding, but does not appear to contribute to controlling bleeding in the joint space. So this is an example of how um, 
tissue specific features can contribute to a very important clinical problem, as well as helping us understand some concepts of tissue specific hemostasis. Similar issues occur in thrombotic disorders and we know many of the features that could contribute to tissue specific thrombosis, but we don't really understand them in any depth and a better understanding of those features will help us treat uh, and uh, manage thrombosis in a wide variety of patient populations.